So I guess I'll be running these double clicks for a while. I ran a lot of single drops, and this is a little bit more Helter Skelter um, coming down fast entries here. So this system's dicey. You can make a lot of money. It's, it's nearly Martingale. And I'm only trading from the long side here. We can put in short trades, but I think it's easier to see a buying opportunity here of a possible pullback where the euro dollar has not been able to cut through the 1250 level up here but you can see the ultimate hand place scalps but it doesn't really matter if you're going to trade 100k it's okay to get an 8k that sucks <laughs> you have to be able to spread your mistakes around so Adolf Hitler I saw in my I didn't know he was alive he commented uh, what the fuck I'm like, what not the fuck? Like, who's not buying this thing while they're sleeping? I can't watch this stuff. Look at the look at the uh, dollar. So total auction on on here. If you didn't buy here at new lows, you fucked up. This is Wild Wednesday stop hunt. The 50 yard line entry. You're up. You're out. In fact, if it clips these wicks, you'll be selling all the way up there. Now I could put in these uh, double clickers. If that order lasts an hour, you may not get filled. Here's where you got to get the timing right. Four hour. They just landed perfectly where I want them. But the, does that order last long enough? That's the other question. So if I put this in here... And I've got this one that's a one hour, I think. If you get the timing right on this, amazing, right? 15 minutes, not long enough. We're selling 15 minutes above. This needs to hang for at least an hour. Or you got to come back and hit the button again. Now, here's where you could get the mouse recorder and have it launch for you. And you teach this mouse robot how many scripts you want to drop you run it on a on a windows 8 or better it's a free program i'll put a link to the thing here it's how you build an employee to launch scripts for you robot stuff never gonna work for me never ea's complete clunky mess um I still couldn't get uh, FX Book to run without uh, freezing the platform on exit. So, give me Windows XP, please. Solid state drive. But uh, Windows 8 has its uh, amazing things. You run this uh, mouse recorder out of Germany and design trade plans. And you can even have an indicators, right? It'll do a pixel pickup. It's looking for a, a change in pixel. So now here the suggestions come up for H1 and H4, but we can put H2 in there. So we'll do that, because I don't want to come back here and babysit this thing again for the same stupid random order placement. We're going to sell double-click all week here at blowupyouraccount.com. Here we have a stop five pips apart, so it's like a soft stop. Now, if you got enough money in the account, you just take this ticket, and this is how it all started. Went down the road to hell. It would start like this. Copy, hit the enter button. I need two hands for this. So, it's a two-handed operation. Not like, not like other things. Okay. Control V. I use the control keys when it starts to really go nuts. So, hit enter control V. Enter control V. Stack that up. So if you want to get hairy with it, then you just come on here, and now you say 350. You're going to buy every 10 pips down. I'm sorry, you sell every 10 pips above us up in the air. Fortunately, that's why it's hard for me to sell. I can't imagine a bounce off the ceiling, but I guess you have to have a structure view like the, the market's a building. And you have ceilings and floors, and this is what's happening. If you're picturing a Super Bowl that's going to bounce, that's going to be a retrace in golf. If you're picturing a dead cat bounce, now you don't have to use a real cat. 
but you're looking for that just a, you know it's got to be a scallop or you, or you can't make something along the way then you're too focused on riding the train system in a destination situation like you go to new york you get on the subway nobody wants to mill around going through all those things they want to get to somewhere but the market doesn't really want to get there in a linear fashion it wants to zigzag its way up drift up smash down uh if you're uh ever s held a swing over four days you say well holy shit a lot of places you could have got out along the way but we don't know the pace at which the drift back you can kind of picture it like it's just normal physics the thing smashes down there's a recoil then there's a settling then we run out of volatility because everybody's just you know the market's in price shock and once people can once people can find a place the window presents itself for funds to come in and out because when the market calms down there's people that trade when the market's calm there's people that trade when the market's wild so those two personalities coexisting at different phases of the party right there's people that like to talk about the weather of the party there's people that like to talk about um you know somebody they hate you know so or it's you know whatever don't like or they love something they love or, or but it's or you have the neutral position hey the weather you know like how can you fuck that conversation up right you're not gonna lose any friends uh stay away from politics and religion that was the creed when i was a kid it didn't work out but that was you know you stay away from those two things well those are the most important things in your life right i mean if that's how you're set up psychologically to view the world so you take that into trading oh my god so i know the buttoned up people with the scanners and the and the um there's that world and that works just as well right i'm not saying that uh you know a, a keel stokes isn't making some money but why so much you know importance on i don't know are you helping people when you when you you don't tell them listen you've got to call me when you have blown up some accounts like just go lose 50 bucks or i don't even know what to say i don't even know why he doesn't just of course who am i talking to when i'm doing these right who, who's my audience I, I guess i'm not i'm not trying to get a like so i don't care but he's trying to he's like like me so already he's at a, at a disadvantage as far as being objective and that's why i'm an ayn rand fan because when i read that stuff living in an un, unobjective world i grew up in where people did stuff out of tradition not out of logic that's where i grew up so that's what i bring to the market is when i hear people with this oh you know uh, oliver um you know old it'll never work glum glum from the fairy tales and when i heard that one as a kid i thought geez really wow why don't you just kill yourself now like save us all a lot of drama and um then there's of course the overconfident moron right <laughs> which i like to think that's what i want i'd rather be in the market because they'd say oh don't get all overconfident stuff but you know for me the big losing thing wasn't uh how to see an opportunity it was how to do the math make sure don't blow up the account terrible math skills always hated my math teacher although she was you know she was uh, strict you know it was um she was a girl it was the only girl i ever saw that was um like a guy <laughs> and so well, this is kind of odd and i can process that but i tell you that math class my god man i can't even do like i can't even I couldn't do 10% of, it takes me a while to think about it. So every has a weakness, but you can see opportunity. Can you take advantage of it and you say, man, look at that retrace. Like if I was still in that trade right now, holy shit. But the, 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 the pips was the problem. So that's why I put up the grid so I could pay attention to what 50 pips looks like on a bar. And what's the trade plan for a 50 pip bar is different than the trade plan for an 18 pip bar or a 16 pip bar now if you had robots that could say oh i got a 16 pip bar came up 
you'd have to you'd have to build and it seems to be impossible to tell MetaTrader. This seems like the simplest trade plan in the world. Like if the last bar is eight pips, put buy stops and sell stops above it. That's it. That's the whole trade plan. But that coding is apparently, and I don't speak Russian, so. Then you got to build another robot that says when you see a, t a 11 and a half pip bar, put in this ticket. But that's going to be a slightly different stop and take profit based on the ATR of that last bar. And you're going to make this 20 row. You got 20 EAs running, and you go all the way up to say 20 pips. You're willing to get involved in increments of low volatility. And all this thing does is. And this is just the breakout strategy bot. Now you got a limit bot, or you got a limit system. ATRs kick up. Now it's throwing orders in super deep. But it takes a lot of time. And these are grandiose things take a lot of time. Like, you can talk about a movie, but do you have the money to film it? You can, we can all imagine the ultimate scenario that's either hysterical or, you know... Um, sentimental but the execution right the money the trading is no different you can make a you can make so much money trading but you would have to put so much work in you, you just couldn't say oh i'm just so good at this i'm just going to trade like a complete goof and over risk and i'm really i'm very unrisk adverse so it's very easy for me to um see an opportunity without paying attention to too much risk there but when i saw this forex market i just said man you don't even have to like leave your house and you can make money and it's just it's amazing but you could write scripts for the next five years and still have scenarios that you um are missed out on like there's so many ways you can get in. You could put in um, 10 pip on this script here alone. You could make it so it looks like some totally random. Now, here I'm kind of getting in linear every 10 pips. But the fills are amazing. And the automation. You can't double click that? So why isn't anybody trading like this? Well, that I see, but because they're like, well, I want to know exactly where to get in. It's in a market that is literally um, a riot. It's like an aerial view of a riot. You know, it's 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 psychotic. And the flash moves. Some of these moves last like an hour. Retracing. It's over. Bye. Or the market's drifting. Here's the, the okay. We're gonna about to get filled here. But um, when you compile this, you got to make sure. This is where everything, uh, pretty much, I published runs. But you always have to test it. If you're gonna start selling, and I'll make this all the way up. This will be 55 pips above current. I'm gonna sell the bid at 65 pips. This number has to be above this number. If your broker has a, when you open that pending order, if there's a, um, if the broker's telling you your orders need to be 10 pips away, then you've got to make this at least 750 or better. All right, so make it 800. Now, if I put an 80 pip stop on this all the way across, it's going to look like this. It's going to be. I usually just double click this, control C, double click, um, and I just control V all the way up here. Actually, if you're holding down control, it's one click. So this is the fast edit master stop. You can come back and feather that out. This is going to be your take profit, which has to be below your entry. So. The reason why it's hard to write buy and sell scripts is that, well, for me, 
You're flipping everything upside down. You're selling the bid. Your 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 stops are on ask, and you're going to get out on ask. So, if your spread's bad, if this is the guppy, then you're going to have to factor that into this. You're going to make 20 pips on this trade if there was no spread. If it's just bid to bid, no, no ask. Here you got an 80 pip stop. Your ratio sucks. But in this script, you're looking at 80 pip stop. You're selling up into it. All right, this is your top sell. This is the sell on and on. Master stops here. Now, where are you going to get out? If you s scalp it to here, it means that you're going to get the moment you drop this. You're saying, hey, put my uh, take profit. I'm assuming the market's trading right here right now. So let's just start over there a little bit. That's a little bit. Uh, okay, master stop, right? All these tickets are sitting with a stop up here. The market is currently here. And it's plodding along. And you press a button. It's going to put a sell limit 15 pips above here. Sell limits right all the way till you get to a window of about this much is your last sell limit. Right? Then on the way out the door, if this is where you're at, this ticket's going to cash out the cells here. This one gets out a little above actually. And they, all these actually get out in the center points. So you basically have a master stop. This is your take profit, and it sells all the way up. And all these take profits are hovering around because you're just exiting. So it's very confusing. Now, if you do the buy side, you have to take all those pluses and make them minuses. Right? That might be easy for somebody first did it I had to type that math and think to myself well what's this thing gonna look like and so you're kind of imagining it we could also put in a soft stop so as it's selling we have a stop that looks like this uh, 75 80 which was you know 75 80 like a cluster here a soft stop Maybe you sell harder right at the edge there. This is uh, logarithmic instead of being linear on these entries. Entries, stops, take profits. These are your, and if this was set to be take profits and it would be a scalp um, retracement, then this has to be plus. Uh, and which ticket's going to be like that, right? So is this ticket going to be plus 10, plus 20, plus 30, plus 40, then you're scalping 10 pips like a zipper. Market comes up, master stop comes up, comes back, scalps 10 pips, end of the world stop. Ratio sucks. Probability of fill on setting these to plus 10. 15, whatever have you. This could be plus on 9, 12, 28. It's the bottomless pit, right? And the probability of this, if it, of uh, these profits, is higher probability you're going to get out on profits than get out on a loss. But if you do get on a loss, you're going to lose big. But if it's not a lot of money, and you know where to place the order, see, this is why between double-click and hand drops, 
right? But if you hand drop enough, then you'll know the kind of ticket that you can perceive, the opportunity you can perceive based on the volatility. As soon as the volatility gets to a certain level, if you have enough money in the account, I mean, that's a terrible thing to say, but you need money to trade. If you launch three of these, and they just had insane improbability of being filled. So they always have to take everything and flip it upside down. You take words and you have to invert them so you can see the other side of the story. What the other, right, you have to do the anti to get the, they coexist, right? You can't have uh, the heaven unless you have hell. Like heaven by itself is like, well, you're just neutral. So the improbability of fill versus the probability of fill and the improbability of being stopped out. So those kind of things balanced out. Plus you have the ATR approach. Now this is pure limit stuff here, mind you. You couldn't make all your money from limits. Just like you could, you're going to have to show up and buy at the market a little bit sometimes because um, there's not gonna there's not gonna be no you can see that hey you know what um, uh oh right better get in here uh, and what size would that be compared to the size of all the pending limits that you have out there and that's really two different worlds trading at the market and trading on on pendings is two different mental states I think one you have to uh, trading at the market you really have to be fit to place pendings you could be completely incapacitated you know I mean you don't have to you just, you're just playing a chance you're just playing random fill game with good ratios, it's just algorithmic trading. And uh, so is, uh, you know, building a robot and stuff like the ATR bot, but, or even a limit bot, all this stuff, right? But what's the maximum efficiency? It's always going to have to be a, a dual approach dual approach so at least you don't have it's not that complex there's no there's only a fork in the road you're either going to get in at the market or you're going to get in on a pending and how long does the pending last the market order is instant you're in you better have a clue of what time of day it is and what time of week it is and is the auction over is there going to be a are you in the are you at fair value you know, in fair value, I have no problem loading a hedge at fair value when the market's dead in the water, fair value, which is, just, you know, sideways markets, fair value for that time period, for that one hour. So you're living in a sea of waves. Like if you're just a little bug out in the ocean and there's a guy trying to catch a wave to surf, you have two different criteria to be successful. So those two things coexisting and all this stuff's happening at once and that's why you have big waves in the oceans because it's created out of baby waves that start to sink up and then they you get a you get a um, standing wave like in a room if you you know the waves keep smacking off the walls and everything's in a balance mode for a while and then it goes the crest of the wave is the spike the turn but yeah, the, there's there's a lull, you know, there's a lull so that uh, volatility is constantly an issue. How close to the do you want to get to the beast? Like, are you trying to trap an animal or are you going to shoot him live? And unfortunately, with the market, you can't psych it out. Like, you can't. Um, intimidate the market because it doesn't know you exist so it's a little disadvantaged the metaphors and analogies don't really hold up you know the the art of war books that people talk about oh did you read the art of war use it for my trading like yeah but dude the market doesn't know you exist so it it's your it's a war against yourself um it's like the war against your f hopes and fears and fear of missing out and so you'd hold the trade because you don't want to miss out on a potential profit. 
and uh, but it's tough to um, keep changing. Like if you have a certain uh, setup that you want to see, you'd have to keep scanning time frames literally. Like in in the, in a perfect world, you'd have a one minute chart all the way up. One, two, three. You can do that on MetaTrader 5. One, two, three, four, five. You can literally have the whole spectrum. And you can put up 10 screens and you could have a one minute. There's a guy that did that. This guy. Every time frame. One to a monthly on each currency. Big wide ass fucking Apple screen. 4K shit. I'm like, dude, what's the trade? He's like, oh, I don't know. Well, you know, the monthly's... You gotta have a trade. Gotta be able to think on your feet a little bit. So yeah, trading at the market's a great way to, to uh, it's really small at the market. It's a great way to get in touch with scalping or uh, feeling out your emotions. And it's very cheap, a lot cheaper than, you know, $100 a month for some stupid, uh, you're just never gonna be, like I could never do it in a, um, I'm just too angry and disagreeable. <laughs> to be in one of these um i've tried it you know i just it just people are just nuts um because people are saying stuff that has to do with money but not have to do with trading it's like being at guitar center anybody go to guitar center people are just hacking away on some effect pedal but you know the old days we had to make those effects with our hands so but it's that kind of world now and it's trading's no different right it's just like a stop box that's that's like a gartley you know i mean it's not it's not it's an effect it's not music it's not uh it's not gonna work like you gotta get blisters on your fingers right I mean, you gotta you got to get a callous approach to money and you just have to see the uh that that way you're not uh blind to the uh right if you're if you're looking at the equity too much then you'll um won't be able to see if you're at unfair value or fair value so right now the the euro dollar is at fair value in my opinion we've dipped back in the british pound jeez oh, i had to jump around here but let me just finish up this let me compile this um just because this compiles doesn't mean that it's going to run. You have to run them on a demo. And I really would with these. On the drops, you don't have to because they won't drop. If they're wrong, they won't drop. These will run even if they're wrong. So it's very dangerous. I don't want to publish the... I, didn't, I would warn everybody, double click. When you go into this kind of trading, yeah, this is. you better make sure these guys run on the demo. Because if it locks and loops and starts dropping, you, you could just end up in just literally blowing up. I mean, without even with thinking that you're okay. So make sure they run, they don't loop. You have to make sure this math's correct. This automated trading stuff is no, it's not for um, mistakes. And. Uh, because you can you can end up churning. <laughs> I've had it happen, so it's it's quite interesting. Sometimes it works out in your favor. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you're like, wow, man, I should do that more often. We need some bad bots in here. So I compile this thing. As long as the asterisk's there, it's not compiled. And then, okay, let's go to. So there it is, and I think I got it right. But I'll drop it. Make sure it doesn't loop. Maybe I should write a, a wrong... Here, I'll write a wrong code in there. I'll force it to be wrong. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like when you get the math wrong here. So if I put... I'm going to sell 15 pips above, but I'm going to put a stop in 10 pips above. And it probably won't even run... Um, wait, here. Let me just do one at the uh, middle here that's wrong a 10 pip stop above i'm going to buy uh 45 pips above with a 10 pip st it's impossible right it's not putting it a 10 pips above this number it's literally putting it in 
So we compile it, it compiles. Now let's run it, and since we're on the demo, let's see how it, cra it crashes. It might get the first three tickets off. Okay, put the first three in, but guess what? It's hanging. Now, it used to run like, um, I've had it where it just starts looping. But see, MT, they, they improved MT4. This is going to reject, um, at least most new brokers I've run, it's going to reject that ticket. So it's, but the problem is, is that right now you can't tell, but it's looping. Oh, maybe not. I killed it. That's weird. So, yeah, I don't know. It depends what broker you have, honestly, because, um, but it only, it only launched three of the tickets. So, it's broker dependent. Some brokers, you do that, it's going to just freeze. It's, and you're going to have to change time frame, and it's going to, you're going to get the famous hourglass. So, let me, let me take off that mistake there. And put this back to 800. Compile that. So this is what it would look like. Kind of going to get in where you're in right now. See, take profits. This would be like a, a go up, sweep, and come back. All right, so it's going to look like this. If I keep nailing that, another thing is if you wait an hour to launch the same script here, you'll start to get a, a wonderful marching in front of the and the market by an X amount. And that's the goal. On that kind of script, like here, if I put buy limits in, which we didn't get filled enough here, so we'll probably have to uh, put them in snug. If I kept running this, now if this deleted, we just missed that entry. But if it lasts too long, you might blow up the account. And when I say blow up the account, I'm just using that as a classic um, statement of losing. And uh, so the British Pound's leaving the station here. We didn't buy enough of this. Actually, that's not the Pound. That's Pound Australia. But they look about the same. This is kind of a a limit trader's market. Very, very, uh, moves quite a bit. You're really trading ATR there. Um, here's British Pound. So if you run, retail these windows out. And you compare the ATRs of, uh, say, these two currencies. Let's see if I get that. To... So what I do is just throw a template in here. and see what the ATRs compare to. Which pound do you want to trade? They're similar, but... Um, so you've got a four-hour. You can see here, this is riskier to trade. This spreads wider, but it moves bigger. So this is the problem I was having when I was trading without uh, grids, is that I was wondering why I was uh, blowing up the account on this currency here. We're here it's stable because... But see, this is a wick. This is a really vicious... Uh, see, the ATR breakout here, see how explosive that is. Here you had your sell so from an ATR standpoint you just missed a sell off here now you could have placed double clicks to put in um, a hedge here and then you cashed out here you needed to get out there but you had a limit maybe hand placed here so the hand place limits that's why I did the video on hand place because see right here buy limit maybe no fill so maybe you dub, do double click last night. When you go to sleep, you double click and put a bunch of buy limits down here to make at least this much. It could engulf. And I reckon we're probably going to... That's could, This could be resistance up here. I'm going to put that out. Signal service. Right. It could be resistance up there. Let's see I get... Uh, um, yeah, my course is $81 a month, and I give you these amazing... Uh, signals I'll put out a shout out that there's um, resistance up here and it might be a good place to sell 81 81.25 a month 
and you may ask why I'm charging 89 uh, 81 25 a month is because I've done the statistics on the sweet spot for this is fair value that's it of course we have Fibonacci prices for $38 and whatever the decimal is on that I'm trying to block it out of my mind it's I I had actually taken RSI and put Fibonacci on there instead of 61.8 I put 62 and then I put the other number and so you have zero and you have zero on RSI right it's I'm mean, zero to 100 but I just went with like 62 and 38 62 and 38 but that's not really right, right? Because it's, well, 100. Yeah, I guess that's right, 100. You put your FIB tool on there, so the uh, people say, well, these FIB ratios really work. Well, any ratio, as you can see, I could write scripts with psycho ratios in a whole spectrum. But really, hand-placing them is always going to trump. Um, manually trading uh, will always be better. Uh, it's like script-assisted trading would be the next thing up the ladder but full ea are you serious like what's this fucking ea doing right you're talking about just more than one ea there's no way there's no way i wouldn't trust that thing i want to i want to make i want to have that thing making some money and the other bot might be losing so you need to have this employee that shows up on time right you have the talented employee that's late and then you have the other employee that shows up on time. Right. And, uh, okay, so we're getting a rally here, and we missed out. We, now we could have hit the buy stop key here, too. See, they're not filling me. So we'll just buy at the market. We'll buy one at the market. These, this is a big monster script I did in the last video. And here's the limits. So if you're impatient, you'll buy now. If you see that, um, well, I'll buy a little bit here. But see the divergence in RSI. Uh, this is on lows, so we have to make this a close. This is left over from that other video I did. No, this is right. It's close. There's a divergence. I'm just not. I'm not seeing it. Right there, divergence in RSI. That's the setting up for the uh, reversal. Any close below this line is still a good trade. And this low came from this low way back here. So this thing's really off to the races. Not to say we can't keep pulling back. So we'll buy on pullbacks here this morning. I would say here is a conservative angle. If you're going to build a channel, though, off of this price pulse here so the momentum price pulses they start to die out and that's when the trend's no longer your friend but for the moment the perfect channel is this setup if you're in a classic setups you just missed your entry there on a good scalp right because you have top become bottom in time plus you're coming back into this wick fractal top i'd buy all the way down so i just throw these in and just go and get more beer throw these in like this always going to be a good trade now how big do we get in we can let the markets i just bought one at the market some big hairy scalp but let the markets market fill us up in the way that we imagine it's going to drop and kind of get in then we can see oh you know this is going to be a good scalp right now and there's no shame in taking profits now this is let your profits run this totally goes counter but this is the way that you can assure that since it's so easy to get back in because you have double click ability don't worry you want to get back in trouble no problem just hit the button again so when you see uh you made uh you can see the market is really just bouncing around you got to take those profits because it's in your in your dreamland it's going to come down and it's going to turn, and it's going to go up. It doesn't. It's such a choppy ride. All that noise is going to destroy you. 
and that's why people were on these tick bars is to take the noise out. But that noise is how you're going to scalp and pad your account for the big move that's the, oh, it's going to take uh, three days. So to be able to trade for three minutes and three days, and you're a person that can trade, you can scalp when the scalping's good, just like when you're driving a car, you know on a slow road you can turn the wheel sharper. Sometimes you're on the highway, you can't, so you can hardly be a, you can hardly drive a car without saying, well, my driveway is not 70 miles an hour, but the highway is. So you can't really get anywhere unless you're multidimensional. But traders usually, they set up for highway driving. They want to go somewhere. Well, what if we just dick around town? They can't do that. That's how you get to the highway, though. So you need to make that money on the scalps. You need to be a good scalper. I'm just saying for people that want to trade for a... They want to kill it. They want to trade for a living and just constantly be like, you know, if I have to, I'll scalp. But they can do it. They know what a scalp looks like, and they don't get, they don't fall in love with the scalps, thinking it's going to turn into a monster trend swing, because they know the limitations of these windows. And if you think you missed out, just put your orders back at the retail, because they're going to come back to the scene of the crime. No criminal would return to the scene of the crime three, four times, but these markets will. They'll retest. How many people, you'd, you'd flunk out. If you were trying to test this much, they'd flunk you out. Markets like un, behaves unlike anything. So people want to always put those uh, moving averages on to say, well, you know, let's just try to simmer this thing down a little bit, smooth out the data. You don't want to smooth out the data. You don't. Why does the recording sound good? Because it's got noise in it. You know, there's, like, people put noise in images. You ever do any, like, digital art? You're putting noise in there to get effects. So the market is its own effect. The market is its own cause for its own effect. And some people are making money from the effect. Some people get in during the, the cause, the sideways action. So the only thing that, it's just like heaven and hell. So the only reason there's volatility because there's involatility. And those two switches, to be a, a, a breakout specialist, and even in that, it's going to be scalp and swing. You might have a scalp of 8, 5, 10, 12 pips on the way out. You just got out of 150K. Now you just got a drift of a few K there. Then you dump the whole thing. Then you realize, fuck, I could just... Throw limits back in, wait for them to come back, and just get into a rhythm of the market. And then just trade like that. You can't really look at the, you can't, and this is almost impossible, is the more money you make, the worse it's going to get, because then you're going to think, oh, geez, I mean, let's throw some fuck, and I've done it, I'm like, let's throw some and market actually goes down there holy shit now sometimes that works out really good but this is why you need more than one trading account because you're going to blow up some of these accounts not blow them up but you're going to have a drawdown where you just can't trade that size anymore then you're going to say well this other account with this other broker it's doing good and maybe you're going to have to retire the other account to just swing trading small positions, but here's where it comes in the delegations. Even if you had employees, you still have to delegate, which is really, I never like to do that because I feel like I'm being mean telling people, you know, do this, do that, I'm paying you. Like, I just don't want to be like that person, I guess. So I just do it myself, right? Instead of, I just yell at myself. It's just... Just uh, self-talk, bad things about myself. Like, you fucking idiot. Jesus Christ. You know, so this is uh, just self-abuse. I think that's my favorite. I don't want to, it's bad enough, right? Because uh, yelling at somebody, um, but criticizing, I could do that all day long. I'm critical, but I'm not mean. So, at least I like to think so. 
But, um, yeah, we're waiting for this thing to play out here. But that's the script writing. So, here's the deal. Double clicks, um, be very careful. And realize you're really doing pure price pure pricing unless you've written and I've got a million scripts right all variations some would never fill in fact on this chart right here I doubt we're ever going to come plunging down 80 uh, 20 to 80 pips today but we could the jobs report's coming out pretty soon, and that could happen. So those kind of like, hey, it could happen. You wouldn't believe how much money you could win and lose doing this shit. Just get that size right, and maybe get stopped out. And if this stuff's going off like popcorn, like you've got all these, you're like, um, if you set it up right, but you see here, you'd have to have different... Um, The pips would change so dramatically between the pound to the Australian pound to the dollar. You're running completely different scripts on that. So if I was to launch the same script on these guys, and if I zoom out one level, you can see the ATR get really... This is almost double. Those are 20 pip grids. So if I go like this... I'm like, oh my god. If I do this here, I'm like, eh, I don't know. More likely to fill this. Of course, maybe not, right? Then you could write one that goes 30 pips deep. The last, uh, the way I view this, if this lasted six hours, the next handle time up, I'd go in at 30 pips deep. The six hours is going to come in at 40 pips deep. 12 hours is going to be 100 pips deep. Dailies, 200 pips deep. You come by, you launch all that shit, you walk away. Market comes down through those tickets. Same thing on the sell side. Now the problem here is you got to rewrite the whole fucking script with make the positives, make the bid to the ask. You got to switch all those um, phrases around, right? So it all makes sense. Great. So, I just froze my keyboard. I had a bad, bad key on my keyboard. <laughs> and spilled some wine on my keyboard. So, um, and the, you can, if you load, if you let this, let the computer uh, hold the scale. Now, when you zoom out, so you can see the ATR difference here between the, uh, the pound and the dollar. I mean, the Australian and the dollar pound against two different instruments. See the viciousness of this. Got a double bottom here. We got a single bottom here. It's a completely different script. If I match the ATRs like this, right? Different story as far as canvassing an area for a plunge by. Look at how vicious this pulls back here now. Brutal, huh? This is very aggressive. 10 pips here compared to 10 pips here. Man, you're right on it. You're buying into this. See, same, same script, two different currencies. So here's the versification. This is more likely to fill, though, because the ATR is so big here. Same script here. Now we delete the arrows, and this is when you're testing and building this now you're going to go 15 pips deep for three tickets you're buying more closer there's a little bit broader spacing between that last one and this is going to last for two hours so you have to summarize these names so you can see the whole thing if i waited another hour i could or the mouse Bot could come over and every hour he's going to drop this one and stuff that you don't you don't want to do you don't want to keep coming back to this and I could put them in the super deep 
and I could put in a shallow one here. So I'm going to trade shallow here. And here I'll trade deep. Because the ATR is, tell, ATR is telling me to trade deeper. Deep here, shallow here. They're both the pound. I want to buy the pound on pullback. So if you laid up all the pound against this, the pound against the euro, the pound against this, right? If you um, you can have six currencies, the pound against six mate, six currencies, right? New Zealand, Australia, euro, I don't know, Swiss, whatever, whatever you can do it against. Spreads, you know, you see the spreads suck on some of these things, right? pound of the yen. And realizing that in a double-click world, <laughs> you know, it's going to be a fixed. You got to pick the right, the right area. In, in a, in a, now, if you're doing uh, hand drop singles, which is quite a bit of work actually. I mean, a hundred drops is a hundred k, but it's forcing you to place the orders in a logical spot where there's right at the right at unfair value for the limits and because you're expecting it to retrace back to fair and you can also just uh, buy at the market so you have the market you have the stop and you have the which is really to me uh, a market order because all my stops are pretty close. They're just kind of like uh, close to being filled because I would only place a stop on a small ATR. I'd only trade stops before the market starts to rip. And then if I miss that move, then I'm going to put limits out in front to trade it coming back the other way because I, I feel like I don't want to chase it. Now, if you drop down to a 15-minute chart, you'd be buying at the market on stops with limits very close, right? You could have a composite where you buy at the market. You can write a script that buys at the market, throws in a stop and a limit on the same double click. So when I say it's a bottomless pit, I'm not kidding. As far as, but you know, this is when you realize, like, what do you normally do to make money? Well, I, it seems like I'm always, um, if you are over eager or if you're ahead of the signal like you're like oh i see a buying opportunity but you're always off by one day then you'll realize well you know what it's i'm i can see it and i'm like getting into early so therefore i'll put in limits deeper and offset or if you're too late to the trade then you're gonna um have to write scripts to cure that or, or this you know this is where you can actually lose more money trading with scripts because if you make the same mistakes you're just making automated mistakes now so that's the that's the downfall of that of automated trading are you writing robots that trade like shit this thing would be about um realizing that oh you know i just uh i'm right and but i'm always off and it seems like there's always a lower lower to come then i would start saying well let's build a buy limit system when you get that feeling that we're going to go up, realize that we're probably going to come back first and just start setting up and uh, putting order banks in that are trend oriented, say they're going to actually have a have an expectation of not just a bounce, but it's going to continue going up. That'd be like a trend script. Or is it going to be so deep that it's really designed to retrace? Is it going to be, you're going to buy 100 pips deep means that really is not a trend trade. You're expecting the market to crash and you're going to buy at the turnaround. If you're expecting the market to pull back a little bit and then rock it, then you're going to get in on limits and stop. A little bit, maybe a couple stops. Limits close to the price, maybe a couple buy at the market, so every hour it pulls back. You just disciplinely keep buying it to a losing, you know, you have to add to a loser to make money in a buy at the market scenario because you don't know the next moment uh, comes. As long as you're not chasing and buying as it, after it's already gone up, then you're fucked. You should be selling. That, that, so trading at the market is counterintuitive to make money, but in limits, you're talking about a strategy 
of buy low sell high irregardless to anything else other than the fact that you kind of want to pick the obvious spots you know the dojis the bodies uh, the previous breakout but it doesn't mean you can't trade like a complete slob and throw orders through the whole market because as long as the probability of fill is low and the probability of profit is high that balancing act between outlandish orders that may never fill and you're actually you know possibly at that point you could be mathematically about to blow up the account if all tickets did fill so that's the balancing act in my opinion is the risk ratios and probability ratios and improbability ratio all that stuff but in the end we're all going to die so who cares anyways right um but yeah it be, before you die though you want to do a few good trades or just play out uh, or let the market uh, do what it normally does you can kind of see the market does go up and down so if it goes down you want to buy but it's how much would you buy and how much money do you have to test that idea out really I don't see a problem buying this on pullbacks here now as the market if the market were to shoot down right now I could launch the 20 pip one the, the same thing to do here if the market would start smashing down and filling me put out deeper orders on, on both pairs um, size to the ATR of how the markets frame so the ATR here is created by the fact that I'm only looking back one week. If I start to really, if I go to like Empowered Tradingville, Ville, where people say, well, you know what matters is, some guy says something. It only matters if you, how big you're in. It's really, if I go max zoom out here, you see the ATR here, it's insane, right? Um, here you can still see the handles showing up that's how big this moves look at the spread double the spread double the fun that's how I, that's how I lost so much money it was I was on the euro to the dollar and euro to the yen can you imagine I, I didn't know I just looked at patterns I'm just a pattern trader I mean I'm just a I'm just a struck I'm just a uh, like are we buying down here yeah, absolutely you can see your if you're trading the size you normally trade here why am I winning and losing so much on this currency where this currency it's like oh it's kind of tame kind of boring so that's a big deal and if you put up everything against the pound then it's gonna dawn on you anybody that's losing and they don't know why because somebody goes oh you should see the setup in this other currency you go over there you get involved you're like holy fuck this thing's really vicious man and you're down as soon as you pull the trigger you're down the spread and you're like what the but if you're a pattern hunter and a gartley hunter that's tough sledding because now you got to like size up every trade and then, and then you're really you know wow you're going to risk a lot more but you're going to make a lot more but isn't it better to spread your risk um do you cut your lawn with one giant blade guy comes out that's that's what's coming next i'm waiting for the laser cutters to come out the laser cutters that'll cut your lawn uh maybe it's uh maybe singe it singe your lawn it's kinder to the grass i don't hear the lawn screaming anymore <laughs> you can listen really close like if you can hear your lawn screaming and, and you think the earth's flat then you probably should, you should maybe you're a good trader can you imagine you hire somebody you have a prop firm and your best trader's out of his fucking mind <laughs> and everybody's like you know the guy the guy thinks that uh he's hearing voices that's how he's making these trades They're like oh he's under well, well, well yeah he's making money but man we had to insure him the lloyds of london wouldn't even insure this guy <laughs> okay getting a serious pullback in the pound here so the pound's pounding i'm not being a good money manager 
I'm glad this is fake money. So here, we're going to buy this pullback. So I'm going to get a super aggressive entry here. Double click. Madness. So you got to watch the margin here, how much you want to, how much you want to be in. But it's all up to you. It's it's a personal taste. You know, punishment's a personal thing. Look at this top bottom setup here. Here we haven't quite. Uh, we kind of in, in, invaded the last known top. It's a one hour. Good buying opportunity here, right? So let's get in slightly below and just load up here in fact just go hog wild with this deep one here i'm just going to go nuts with this 15 minute and set it and forget it for an hour now if this is uh all day long at 10 pips deep this might be the best trade you'll ever get because you may never see a pullback but double click are you kidding me you can't get a robot. See, that's what I wanted, a robot that could see the ATR and the robot's going to go and go, oh, do this script. Do this script. Load up. It's plunging. Catch the falling knife. So let's catch the falling knife trade here. So it's Martin Gale, Martin Gale in the sense that it's adding to a loser. I'm buying as it crushes down here. The old pullback trade. And here, we're slightly long this. Now, this is the ATR in here is nothing. I buy one at the market, buy some on stops here. People don't like to trade this. This is like Swiss franc, it's too tame. That's why people trade these other currencies. There's no other reason. When people say they're trading the guppy, they want to win and lose a bunch of pips. It's, it's, a, it's a hell of a, of a... Okay, so we're getting filled here on the pound. It's a hell of a lot of pips. So if you like pips... So here, if I get enough chart space, I'll open it up, insert the, uh, I'll just view the market watch here, and go for a guppy, Let's take a gander of the spread here, um, okay, template, uh, just go for the standard, now this is a 20 pip, oh look at that, kind of moves a lot, doesn't it, boy oh boy, here let's buy some limits here. No questions asked. Right there. Yeah. We already know this thing's off the rails. We know that thing can move like a like a rape date. Here's the four hour. See, you want you want to make a bunch of pips? Trade trade this. So let's compare, um, contrast and compare here. Go to the um, one. We'll go to the four-hour ATRs. Got to get the right zoom level. And um, delete the objects. Look at the ATR on this puppy. Double this. Which means you got to run this script over here. You got to run this script here. And you got to run this script here to buy the pound. To get the, the ATRs and the, and the volatility correct on that. See how that. And I should probably have this on the left. Um, or you could have this on the right. So the heavy, this is the shallower, you're running 10 pips here, here you're running 20 pips deep, and here you're running 15 pips deep. Approximately the same, if you can get that right, then it's just, a, it's a wonderful thing. 
And this is just for the scalp. I don't think I have any take profits in here that in fact these are just I think this is like an insane risk. Master stop, you see it down here? Right here is your stops are in black, your take profits are in black, your entries are in like sea green. So the, to see your orders here, you go to colors, and when it says volumes, this is your limit color. So stop. It's also your take profit, black. Okay, we're taking on some serious uh, pullback. Now, if you didn't buy enough here, on this top bottom, you'd have to get in at the market there. But maybe you're waiting for these guys to smash down. Okay, that's uh, just sitting there. Now we're waiting for the retrace. I'm going to hold through this. Uh... This is the rollover about here coming into U.S. You'll see a lot of a lot of auctions right here in this window two hour window between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. so you can just trade that you can trade a wick to this time of day and scalp that wick and just go to your day job you gotta get a little early but you can place these and if you like to watch it or you can trade at the market uh, from the closing of uh, Asia into the uh, and that rollover and the pound you know um, you're really trading the pound here but you're aware of the ATRs and um, pull back in here you really only care about the last see you're coming into a double top here at an angle but it's really just about buying low. Here you you miss the sell limit scalp here. You see the sell limits are right at the edge here. But it looks like we could engulf all the way into this void that still exists. But I'd be willing to buy anything below this wick here. So put your uh, basket of limits. Be careful you don't put in the 10 pip deepers. Go with the mega deeps on this guppy. You gotta trade super deep on highly volatile currencies. They're still getting dollar still. Uh, so right here, the next hour could be insane. We could smash all the way down. The euro's pulling back now. It's still a good, so we're starting to get a good uh, reversal. Now here it's going to be shallow because this market barely moves. And how long does that ticket last? We want to buy this stop out here. This pullback. I'm in really big here. Um, I mean, I could be in really big if that filled. So potential of fill. I'll buy one at the market. Because it's the bottom of the hour. And if you look at the half hour chart, it's down. So you should have been buying this whole pullback just a little bit. This drift down. You're building into this at the market. And buy stops, right? Buy stops above right now. As you drift down, they trap the bears under this fractal. Trap them in the sense that this is the one hour people are getting in on stops. You know, I sold that fractal down there, and that fractal stuff really works. Oh, really? How's it working up here for you? Getting trapped on these fractals? Ouch. So. You want to trade the breakout. That's what I said to Bill Williams. I walked up to him. I said, why don't I put a stop on the inside of here? Well, well because the fractal wasn't formed yet. Well, yeah, but... 
I'd leave that as a confirmation that I know what I'm doing. Like if you bought on a stop here, like I didn't understand, the guy from Forex Fusion didn't, he missed the point of my video. Putting buy stop here, when the market's up here and you're going into your sell limit fractal and you see the show up behind you, yeah, you're like, see, told you, bought right at the fractal. See, told you so. And, uh, you know, same thing here, you get, you're short on this, right? You're short on this ATR breakout and then after it plunges, you're like, see, I told you. This will be a fractal if this goes up, but you want to get in here. You want to buy here, don't you? You got to buy there. Even if it's a little bit, it, it all adds up. Okay, looks like a plunge now. So if I have buy stops here that are like uh, four pips above and stuff, no harm, no foul. One of these is a 2K, I think. Here, 2K. So this is going to buy 8 pips above, and it's look it's got a 10 pip stop. I'm sorry, it's going to buy an eighth. It's going to buy um, 0.8 pips above. So let me make this uh, going to buy, um, we're going to buy um, 3 pips above. And we have an 8 pip stop looking to make an ungodly amount of money, but we'll just make it a scalp. Here's where the probability of making money comes in. We're going to try to make 10 pips. Overpay by 3. Scalp. The ticket, this will be uh, hot key C8. And this is where I can get away from you too, is you forget which key's which. So here's the scalp trade. Still getting pullbacks on the pound. I can't tell what I'm losing on though. Too many tickets running. Okay. Take the euro out of the picture. Go for a pure pound view. Okay, so hopefully we filled on some of this. Everybody's on the one hour. Top bottom's on the one hour. We zoom out. Okay, that was a great scalp we missed. We were too conservative. But we could also get hurt on this one. We could feel some pain on this one. So if you're a pain slot, this is the game for you, trading. All right. That's the one-hour view. And here was my... Uh, it queues up on the four hour. See, the nice thing about the closing price is that they, they're transferable in time better. Where that wick would have, you can go from a half hour to a 15 minute and the trend lines will, will hold together because they're, they're built on close. I hope I got this set to, uh, So, to that, okay. so here's a double bottom. Uh, you want to get in at the first bottom so you know it's a double bottom. This is where a kill Stokes um, is afraid to do is buy this bottom because he's not sure if it's going to keep tanking. And uh, But see, this is just what parents do to their kids. They transfer their fears to their kids now their ki kids are scared of the same shit they're scared of so going to a coach that's afraid to trade is not a best place to go I don't think here's the 15 minute we'd be waiting to get filled on this stuff here it doesn't look like it's gonna happen let's take a look Canadian dollars ready to crash now so this could be lights out for Canadian I do think it's it's just it's overdone. Although here's the bullish argument. Who knows? Who cares? Because if you had sold at the round number here, you're just loving it, right? If you sold high. Did 
they're trapping the um, bears right now on that, so you should be buying it back. There's the exit door if you're going to buy here. Or are you going to sell up there? So I would buy this on a plunge in 15 minutes. See how close, it's too close to the market there. Got to know the ATRs here a little bit. Here, 20 pips, 15 pips deep. That's probably not going to fill. This could fill. Just don't click it too much. Come back in an hour and do the same double click. If the market's moved up or down, and this is decays in an hour, so you have this constant... Um, what you're doing is you're treat you're you're these since the it's an auction market these are auction orders they have an expiration so auctions have a time limit on eBay anybody notice that the M guy M trader might know about this you have this uh, and there's a kind of a franticness right this is why you see at the top and bottom of the hour sessions close there's a frantic move. Everybody heads for the exit doors because it's it auctions up. So the 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 trick key here here is to have your inventory be at auction too. It's a 15 minute script. You're gonna hit it or fill it, fill it or kill it. So you, and you have the eight hours one right, the big inventory, the deep, the deep state orders. Those are those are lingering real deep, and those are all fi figured out. And you got that on a laptop somewhere that you don't open because you're a discipline trader. And you got that approach going, but if you can see how that would be a completely different trade plan scenario, may not may never fill actually. But that's the auction. Some auctions never end on eBay. Some have I I. I see stuff where you're like, well, and some stuff is like, when you get to eBay, for the people that like to trade at the market, you'll see the auctions, oh, this auction's about to end, you're like, oh, so the feeling that you get on eBay if you're buying at auction, you're really trading at the market. If you place a bid and they never fill you, okay, so anytime time I went to eBay, I just bought, buy it now, because I know what I want. I'm not worried about the price. Um, and I guess that's what fundamental traders do. They're like, well, looks like that country's going to hell. I'm just going to buy. Now, they'll lose They'll lose if they put it too tight a stop because then they got to keep getting back in and overpaying the spread. And they can just, you know, you just, it's a, it's a um, death of a thousand cuts. Keep trying to get on the train. You've been told to put in uh, a stop that's 2% of your account. Yeah, at the end of the day, you're down 20%. Done it. Been there, done it. On demos, real money. Then you start to think, well, maybe I got to think ahead. I would think like four hours ahead. Put a four hour order bank in. Let it bake. See what happens. You know, just, uh, it's magic. MT4, make as much, much money as you can. This is probably outlaw Forex trading at some point, right? I guess my nightmare is that everything goes to par and the, and the market's flat and people are just like, I go, where's everybody? Well, they're out fishing, you know, they're out, they're on their boats. I'm like, but nobody's trading, huh? No, everybody's rich now. Nobody's struggling. That's my nightmare. My, my, my nightmare is that things do work out. And then you end up like this guy from... Uh, this guy from... Uh, the, this Chris uh, guy, this singer, who died at 52 years old, killed himself. This guy from Soundgarden. He was like, oh yeah, I'm bored. See ya. Been there, done that. So losing may be the best thing that ever happened. But it's really going to be difficult. It's always going to be difficult. Each level you go up, the more you make, the more you have to lose. And if you don't have anything, if you're starting from scratch, 
then like I said, if you have a day job and you make enough money, you don't have to, you can just trade for fun. I don't know why, I, Akil Stokes is so funny that he would turn down a client because he just wants to have fun. See, a hooker could never have a job. Like, hooker couldn't say to you, listen, you're paying and you got to be in love with me. I'm like, what? I'm paying you so I don't have to be in love with you. I'm paying you so you won't call me in the morning. So, but that's why that's the incongruency because it kills Stokes. Mary's got a kid and he's a normal guy doing normal stuff. Yeah, I'm sure he's, I'm sure that's it's a right fit for somebody. In fact, if you are, just don't tell him that you're just doing it for the fun. I think it's because people want to help somebody, but if you're a really good coach and you realize that some people are just forced to be there, like when I was in school, you're forced to go to like uh, they called it phys ed, and there was no education there. It was just punishment. So more like fit fizz punishment they should have called it they should have called it um just punishment and uh humiliation too so you know if you're just not into jumping in the pool because you're like you know chlorine's just not my gig today but the coach says that you're here and we want only serious traders. We want people that take this seriously. I just don't want to be talking to hear myself talk. But that's something your parents say. You're not paying your parents. I wish I could have. I wish I could have paid them off. Leave me the fuck alone. If I had won the lottery when I was a kid, I'd just go, I'm leaving. You're not old enough. Fuck you. But, uh, yeah, so trading. Double click. Be careful. Be careful out there. You could double click your your fortune away. Okay, we're up thirteen bucks, seventeen bucks here. We're killing it. Trying to make the thirteen thousand dollar barrier in this demo. Some guy told me to stay demo. Okay, buddy. I know that every airplane you build flies perfectly, but this is the, you have to take the um, without ending up. Uh, you know with your nails growing too long like Howard Hughes you do want to experiment with a demo you don't want to fly every plane I think that's what fucked them up you had, had brain damage plus when you when you invent stuff that deep you just end up uh, kind of in a very select here looks like a place to, to sell here on this so uh, CAD. Okay, if you scalped, you gotta be thinking about getting out here in the one hour. I'm just saying. Back to the floor on clothes. Alright, so that's it. Uh, double click. Double click trading.